Let's go to Hawaii now. Let's try to get him Coach Reinbold, special teams coordinator of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Looks good to me. Coach Reinbold, howdy, sir. How are you? I'm great, Rod. How's everything in the prairies? <laughs> it's cold. It's not what you're enjoying over there in the Big Island. How's life over there? How's the temperatures? How are things? This morning, it, uh, it's, it's about 7.30 in the morning here, and it's about 80 degrees and bright sun and <laughs> wonderful, beautiful morning. We walk. My wife and I went for a walk this morning. Watch the sun come up over the Pacific, and it's beautiful. Wouldn't you love to be in Winnipeg, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> frankly, no. I, although, you know, it's it's funny. We we talk about it all the time that you know, people are, are places are where the people are, and people make places. And you know, I. I the year and a half I spent in Winnipeg, although we didn't win any football games, it was a lot of fun. There were really wonderful people there. And same thing in Regina and, you know, all over. So it's about the people. Hamilton, same way. It is. And by the way, before I, I want to get into the football questions, but here come the questions. Gary in Winnipeg says, I remember when Jeff was introduced to the Winnipeg media, he roared in on his Harley. They still talk about it, Coach. What do you remember about that, that day? I, and I that, know. Yeah. I know. Oh, you know what? It was really, it was interesting because um, the the gentleman who hired me, uh, Lynn Bishop, the president of Bombers at the time, was deeply, deeply involved in trying to get uh, airport clearance to, to he, he, he was involved in a project with China and eventually had to step away from his presidency with the Bombers that spring, which was really tough on us. But one of the Lynn recognized was that <clears throat> we had to get the image of the club changed. We had to you know, he wanted to get more, he wanted to get younger, he wanted to approach the young fans. Um, and really, we didn't have anything to sell other than that. And so, um, in a lot of ways, all of that, that whole marketing campaign was because we were in such bad shape, I needed to, needed to uh, try and inject some juice into the image of the team. And, <clears throat> and I think we did. There are a lot of things... Rod, to be honest with you, there are a lot of things we did wrong there, and I'm, I'm taking personal responsibility for that when I say me. But there were a lot of things that we did right there. The fact that so many people still talk about us and so many fans reach out, and, and the players the, the players that we had were fantastic guys. They, they were really, really a really great bunch of men. And uh, still very close, you know, still really, really close to one another and still – communicate together and you know you'd have think you'd have thought we won two great cups rather than one you know eight games whatever it was but i will make this statement who and excuse me we were three and one against the rough riders in my two years <laughs> <laughs> well uh you know we, there's a few things that come to mind when you say that a we tend to learn things along the way right and uh well, right. that, that's the main thing right there. We all come out of these things better for it. And as you say, it is memorable. And you can't make – well, yeah, Steve Barato said it. The loneliest job in the world is being the head coach of a bad football team. You can't make chicken salad out of <laughs> lemonade. <laughs> right? Let's look, the, the players weren't that great there either. But, Coach Reinbold, before we get to the CFL and Canadian football – because you follow the NFL so close and you cover the uh, the league for Sky Sports and you're at Super Bowl every year. Do you see the NFL getting through this year? You realize everybody's talking about that, right? Yeah, I think I think uh, you have to understand, first of all, what the NFL is. It's a billion-dollar industry. And it is an industry that um, is has a unique structure. And I think it's it's a great it's a structure that all sports leagues really need to think about because, you know, it's 32 of the world's biggest capitalists operating in a communistic system where every <laughs> revenue is shared, all all of those things. And so uh, for them, it's very, very important that they play and finish the season. And I think it's very, very important for uh, NFL fans everywhere that they play and finish the season. Obviously, this, the, the last two weeks of, with the COVID situation has, have been really difficult on the NFL. But the NFL is committed. And here's where I, I you know, Rod, I, you know, when, in the, when I worked for the NFL and we used to go to the meetings in, in New York at, uh, 
And one of the things you recognize, there, there wasn't a lot of football guys in that building, but there were sure a lot of really smart guys in that building. And I don't think that they haven't thought about a lot of contingencies. There, none of this stuff has surprised them. They knew that there were going to be hiccups. They knew that there were going to be games moved. They knew that all of that was going to happen because it's unrealistic to put 32 teams in a bubble when you've got hundreds of people that would have to go into everybody talks about well hockey did it and and major league baseball did it and it, it, with you know some hiccups also and the nba did it but you're talking about very very small groups it wasn't the whole league it wasn't 150 people or 200 people that you'd have to put in a bubble and you know it just logistically going into a bubble was not something that they could so they went to the next best alternative that allowed them to play the game they would play, play the games and and i applaud the nfl for you know nfl football is such a part of the fiber of america and sports fans around the world that uh we we needed to play the games we needed to finish the season and i think mr goodell will do everything in his but when i say mr goodell i'm talking about the league will do everything in order to finish the to finish the season do, do uh should they start allowing crowds do you think well next year will they of course will they have full crowds do you think well i think it's really you know uh, that it's kind of like an individual basis you know and, and one of the things that you got with america is you you know the state's writers like for example the florida florida has completely different protocols than you know the state of montana does and um, you know, I know that uh, even though the the governor of Florida said that the Dolphins could have seventy five thousand people in the stands, the the owner of the Dolphins, Mr. Ross, said, "No, we're not going to do it that way." So it's kind of on an individual basis because of what the states allow. But I think the NFL is very, very. You seen? I, I don't know, John, if you've seen how <clears throat> how aggressive they've been in finding people who blatantly disregard masking or social distancing or all these things you know to the point where if the coaches mask off to to address an official without, without their mask on you know, they're they're threatening them with hundred thousand dollar fines and oh. loss of draft picks Whoa. so they're not they're not fooling around they're, they're not you know and some of that's posturing i know but they're not fooling they're not fooling around this is you know it's not going to be a slap on the wrist you know, john gruden's paid a hundred thousand dollar fine for not wearing his mask in the first game so Ooh. You know, I think they, you know, they're, they're, they're committed to do whatever it takes to, to make sure that this thing finishes. To, uh, to a CFL question. Uh, well, and by the way, J Jeff, you figured out the secret sauce to what the NFL doesn't have and the other major leagues is the fan interaction because um, it's what we do here. We bring everybody into the discussion. Your Instagram, well, A, you play catch with kids on the road with the tie cats and warm up. There's videos of it out there. You get it. Your Instagram live stories where you sit there and answer questions from people sitting on the edge of a recliner at Super Bowl week. Like I was trying to write you in questions. There were so many coming. You didn't see mine. Because people love it. It's so, man, it just <laughs> sucks you in. No, no, I'm not upset about it. So, yeah, you get it. Fan interaction. The other leagues don't have that. That's what well, I think will bring the CFL back. But one of our show topics today was there's more Canadians than ever in the NFL and NCAA. This, mm -hmm. has, this has to be a great thing for the CFL. I don't want to catch you off guard here because I think it's a difficult question. But how can the CFL capitalize on that, do you think? Well, I, th I think there's a number of ways, and, I, and I've watched some of the press releases come out from the league. When Claypool went off and scored his four-touchdown game the other day, I, they made a big deal out of it in uh, on Third Down Nation and also in, you know, a CFL. The CFL does a good job. Alex Singleton, when he when he scored his touchdown to help the Eagles win the other day, you know, again, it was released. The, the CFL did a, did a release on it. I think those things are all positive things. And I think what we got to recognize as a league, and, and this is something that we've said for decades as, as coaches, is that we have to do a better job of, of growing our, in our country. And um, frankly, both of them has happened in Canada without the help of the Canadian Football League to a great extent. You know, because schools started to look beyond the borders 
for prospects when, you know, Michigan had Bianca, but two sudden teams started, you know, and, and, and Michigan State came up to Canada and started to recruit well that that causes a change whenever there's a talent pool exposed teams are going to take advantage of it because recruiting so uh so competitive but we have as a league i don't think have done our part and in, in helping to grow the game and i'm talking about at the grassroots level because if you if you watch the nfl the nfl does a great job with fan development and player development and player development doesn't happen when a player comes to the national foot when he's drafted in the national. that's the individual player development but getting more kids playing the game getting women playing the game flag football all of those things because the nfl gets it it that those the spinoff benefit to all of that is you create fans create people who may Maybe foot, flag football is the only football they play because they don't want the physical part of it, but they appreciate the game. They understand the game better. Grow the game in your own in your own backyard because fan development and player development absolutely have to go hand in hand. And you have to invest in the grassroots. You gotta start with the young kids. When a guy like Claypool does what he does, that immediately sends a message to every young Canadian there, unrealistic or not, uh, sends a message to every young Canadian, why not me? And we need to echo that message and we need to create opportunities for a young kid to to play the game, to to get good coaching. In, in Canada has gotten diametrically better in the 30 years I've been up here. But it's still not what it needs to be on the grassroots level. Yes, it is that you take Laval or Western or you, but we're talking about at the high school level, at the junior high level. Those guys are the, are the lifeblood of our game. And they not only su supply the players, the talent pool, they also supply people who will become fans of the game. And, you know, we get it. I mean, Rod, you hit it. Our league does a better job in the NFL and player interaction. Our player in the NFL guys, they have more access to the fans. Uh, they uh, Again, it's just it's the way it's always been. But we have other part, which is the fan development, player development aspect. And I think we need to invest money in that. My personal feeling is when you're in a, when you're in a uh, economic situation where money matters, invest at home first before you invest outside your home. Because you need to grow your homegrown talent. Well, you sound like Mother Teresa. She says, you want to save the world? Start with your own house. It applies. That's true. And it is true. It's, it's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. You know, if you think about it, Rod, we, we have nine teams in our league, right? And if, if we have cooperation, not competition, there's going to be competition because we're competitive guys and we're playing a competitive sport, right? We're involved in a high performance industry. It's gonna be competitive, but it can never be competitive to the point where there's not cooperation because M Montreal, Toronto, B, Saskatchewan, Edmonton, Calgary, we're all, we're all tied together. If Toronto doesn't get its stuff straightened out, Montreal continues to struggle, BC can't get 20,000 people in the stand, we all, face problems and and you know we saw it last time. so we have to get out of this provincial my think our club my team and start thinking about the league thing what's and that's what the NFL got a long time ago the Cincinnati Bengals are not anywhere close to the Dallas Cowboys but they can compete on an e equal footing because there's league thing and you know I I it's such a great model for every pro sports organization to follow. Oh, man, you're breaking up a little bit, but it's what you're saying is so good. I don't want to let you go, but um, I will. frenzy has got to go. His ride's here. Anything else on your mind, Coach, before we let you go? No, I just really think Dave, uh, excuse me, Craig Dickinson's comment the other day about, hey, we'll play in the parking lot. You know, but I, it's, I think that, that what he said is, 
speaks for every player, every coach, everybody that's involved in the CFL. We need to have a season in the spring. We need to start thinking about if COVID doesn't go away, how are we going to do that, right? So we're not caught up again, again. I think we all have to understand that, we, you know, we got to link arms and we got to fight this thing together because that's the way that we're going to come out of it better. We'll come out of it. I don't doubt that. I, this league has got more lives than a cat, right? <laughs> so for it to come out strong, for it to come out what it's capable of becoming, then, you know, it's going to take all of us linking together and recognizing that it's not the Winnipeg Blue Bombs and Rough Riders, the Hamilton Tiger Cats or Toronto Argonauts. It's the Canadian Football League. And we, we all need to stand up for our game and and do what we can to make it right. And wow. not by cutting salaries. I'm telling you. What a speech, not, buddy. That's, that's not that the answer. That is terrific. I, yeah. I agree. It's not but, yeah. but I'm telling you, Pat Riley will tell you and one of the things I, he wrote a great book one time about what it, you know, how to build a how to build a franchise. And he said it's not by cutting salaries. You don't cut to a profit. You you grow to a profit, and we have to understand that. And you keep cutting players' salaries, you're going to have less talented players in a in a poorer game. And you keep cut, you're going to get coaches that want to come up and 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 invest in our league. Fewer and fewer lifers, all the are less Gene Gaineses of the world, Ronnie Lancasters of the world. As a fact, they got their families, and you know they need to feel they work they need to feel proud about where they work and and i'm proud of the cfl i don't i say that all the time i don't i'll be at the you know at the super bowl and we'll i'll be and i'll say hey listen we got a great game we got a great game and you know i think everybody all of us need to stand up for our game that's the fastest 20 minutes in sports coach thanks uh let's do it again soon stay safe over there chef you were great hey anytime my man hey fam- Frenzy, see you later, buddy. Give him a wave. There, give him a wave, Flinch. Huh? He's looking at you. Hi. Right. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Coach Reinbold, check it in from the Big Island. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.